and to try in this half hour to be able to quickly and, um, and, and at the same time with a little bit of insight, a little bit of depth to cover these pieces um, of Torah with Hashem's help. So let's begin with the first piece from the Me'a Shilach from Rav Mordechai Yosef Liner of Ishbitz in volume two. And it begins with a small little piece, HaChodesh HaZelachem. In this week's parasha, the very first mitzvah is introduced to Klai Yisrael, which is the mitzvah of Kiddush HaChodesh. That Klai Yisrael count after the lunar calendar as opposed to the rest of the world, which counts after the solar calendar. There's a lot of depth over there and that distinction, why Klai Yisrael have this relationship, particularly to the moon, is a very deep thing. Without getting into the depth, just the remez that the Me'a Shilach says over here, HaChodesh HaZelachem, where HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Rashi says, showed Moshe the image of the moon, how it looks in the very beginning, so that he should be able to be even Kaddish, and here the Ishbitzer goes, Adar HaRemes, Hainu, what this means is something far deeper in a certain way. Koach Lechadish Yelechem. You know what it means? Achodesh Azalechem. Achodesh means a month, certainly. And of course, the reason why Chodesh is called Achodesh is because the moon is renewing itself all the time, and that's what marks the beginning of a new month. But far deeper is Achodesh could literally mean the power to renew, the power of renewal. Achodesh Azalechem. The power of renewal and the power to be mechadish, to innovate, belongs to you. Yelachem, shetuchlu lechadish, heim b'divrei Torah, the heim ban hagar, throughout the generations, Klai Yisrael have this incredible capacity and ability to develop Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu v'nasan lanu Torah sem, as he gave his Torah to us. Of course, there are different klali hapsak. It's not anybody who stands up and decides, you know, to, to have a convention somewhere and to make a takana in 2018. It doesn't work this way, right? Obviously, there are klali of the psak and Klai Yisrael unanimously chooses who the gedolim are, or at least large swaths of Klai Yisrael, and the psak goes ahead and follows those authoritative camps. But al kalpanim, we have the ability to develop the Torah, not just bedivri Torah, not just in Torah thought, but hein ban haga also. So in Hanhaga, in different modes of dress, in different modes of behavior throughout the generations, how Klai Yisrael change, but they always remain connected all the time to the source, like Rav Kook describes, Torah Shabbat Peh and Torah Shabbat Sav is the flame and the coal, right? Torah Shabbat Sav is the coal, and the flame is Torah Shabbat Peh, ultimately one without the other, they're inextricably bound together. So that's what it means, HaChodesh HaZelachem, this power to renew is given to you. No sin Hashem Yisbarach Zeh HaKoach Yisrael, the master of the world has given this ability to Klai Yisrael, and again, Chodesh and Chidush could mean to innovate, but it also means renewal. Klal Yisrael have the power of renewal. This is what it means, you know, when we, when we define the very essence of Klal Yisrael's national nature, it's the power to renew. And no matter what we go through, we just had Holocaust Remembrance Day, I think they're marking 70 years, 75, 75 years, 75 years from, from Auschwitz. Unbelievable to, you know, to believe that on one hand, we're so already distant from that, but on the other hand, we're still so close to that. And we see some of the same patterns beginning to emerge. We should see the Google Shlema, you know, with, with our own eyes. But this ability to renew, to always renew like a, like like a phoenix, you know, that, that bird that had to be burnt, and then from the ashes it, it rose again. That's, that's our thing. The Avshin, Yerish has a very deep thing, even though it appears that it can't be that Klal Yisrael are themselves being Mechadish, Kivin Shuvis because ultimately, where does all Chiddush come from? All Chiddush needs to come from the master of the world. What's this? That human beings come ahead and they make a new gedder and they make a new takana and they make this usr and make this mutter. Who, who gave you that ability to tap into objective morality to tell people the way that they're supposed to live their life? How could that be? But we need to understand that who's speaking these words? Ah, it's the Rebani Shalom. That like God already signed off from the beginning on what would it be. We learned this re- recently in one of the recent shirim about the Noam and the Melech when we talked about Reb Chanina Mendoza, right? And he was able to say this this uh, uh, chola is going to live and this one's going to die based on the way him shkurat because everything already had been sealed and, si- and, and signed. And that's what we learned that shkura doesn't just mean that it was fluent in his mouth, but it was familiar to him because, in a certain sense, bekoach in potentiality, he had already been davening this tefillah. Because that was already foretold. So in a certain way, God already signs off from beginning. He signs off on all of our schatches. So it appears to be chiddush, but the truth is it's not chiddush at all, right? That was already all the way kavua, um, and it was instituted all the way before the world was created. That all chiddush should be already included in this Indian of the Torah and Kedosha. So that's a deeper understanding of a chodesh. It's right? It says something similar. Every chiddush, every... Right, where, where the chiddush come from? Everything. 
It's all from a Kaddish Baruch. That's exactly right. One of the first sikhs that we learned together in the sikhs. Okay, let's go to number two. Me'ashilach, volume two, another piece, Lamantia, Torah, Hashem, Beficha. This pasa comes in the parasha when we're talking about matzah, and ultimately the remembrance of Yetzirah Mitzrayim in all different sorts of ways. The famous Ramban in this week's parasha that says that really every mitzvah, Zechel Yetzirah Mitzrayim, is the foundation of our faith. And certainly in that parasha as well, it makes a reference to Tfilin, and then right after that, that reference to Tfilin about Ukshartam La'osal Yedecha, that we need to go ahead and to wear on our arms and on our heads, also super, super deep. Deep, what this means, just on a simple level, right? To bind our practical actions to HaKadosh Baruch that's Tefillin Shal Yad, and also Tefillin Shal Rosh, is our machshava, right? Is the axiomatic principles of our identity in a spiritual sense that this should all be devoted to HaKadosh Baruch Tefillin Shal Yad, Tefillin Shal Rosh, but al Kopanim, the Pasuk says, Lamantia Torah Hashem Befichas, that the Torah of God and the remembrance of Ultimately, if Akadosh Baruch Hu taking us out of Mitzrayim should be beficha, should be always in our mouth. Says the Miyashiloch, an incredible thing. It's good to remember this piece for for the Seder to say it over on Pesach. It's a Pesach Torah, and he says, on the first night of Pesach, Tzivash Emis Baruch Akadosh Baruch Hu commanded Sha Adam Yivarich Yivare rather Espiv. In Chutz it says both nights of Pesach. He's referring to the Seder, as we're going to see. But Al Kalpanim, Pesach and the Sedarim is about me, Mivarer, the Piv, the capacity, or all of the capacities that are included within the mouth. The whole thing of Pesach, without getting into the depth, because it's not exactly our topic, and it's a very expansive topic, but the whole Gullus Mitzrayim and ultimate Geula from Mitzrayim is bound up with the mouth. Right? Fascinating thing is that Moshe, the Goel, is a kvad peh. He has a hard time speaking. Paro, that Rizal says, is osios ha'orif, right, is the back of the neck. Moshe says to Paro, if I want to go and daven, he tells Moshe, he tells Paro, kitsesius ha'ir, Ephros is kap. I have to leave Mitzrayim, and then I'll be able to spread my hands up in prayer. Mitzrayim is what's called galus ha'dibor. When the dibor, the speech goes into galus, it goes into exile. When speech is exiled from the heart, Right? Those two things always have to be connected together, that a person should speak words of truth, which means that the heart and the mouth are connected, which in the same Yudke Vavke, without getting to the depth, is the first hay and the last hay, represent respectively the heart and the mouth. The first hay is called hay ila. It's connected to bina, which is connected to the lave, bina liba. And then the final hay in Yudke Vavke is the mouth. And these two things are connected. They're called the mother and the daughter. They have this very deep and intrinsic relationship. They're like a reflection of one another. What bina is in the spiritual realm, Malchus is in the in the in the fa- in the in the practical physical realm, and these two things have a relationship, and they need to be connected to each other all the time. We discussed last time the yichud between the final hey and the rest of yud kevavke, but be, but beetzem this very specific yichud between hey ila hey tata the heart and the and the mouth, which again on a practical level means that a person is speaking words of truth. A person is speaking what he has in his heart. He speaks with his mouth. When that doesn't happen, the pasuk says, and Yeshaya screams about this. Bisvas of Kibduni, Akadash Baruch Hu says that Klai shall honor him with his lips, but Vilibo Rikhak me many, but the heart was very far away. Mm-hmm. The whole thing of Gullus Mitzrayim, when a Jew is in his own personal Mitzrayim, is that his words of tefillah, they don't reflect, or he, at least he doesn't perceive for that to reflect his, right, Mitzrayim. A person is in a, is in a constriction, is in a struggle. He doesn't perceive that tefillah is reflecting anything that he really has inside him. He's learning, he doesn't feel that it touches, that it's not relevant to him, right? So, so he, he makes like what they call lip service. That's what lip service is, is that it's disconnected from the heart. And um, ultimately, Mitzrayim is also the Lashin, the throat is called Mitzr, Mitzr Hagaron, right? It's the thinnest part of the, of the body, right? From, from, the, from the feet all the way to the top. Everything is wide, and then the throat is the narrowest, the narrowest part, and that's called Mitzr Hagaron, also a Lashin of constriction, which is associated with the speech or the lack of speech. And the Dagamach Nefraim says a fascinating thing. Again, not getting into the very, you know, the deeper depths of what this means because we have a lot to do with it. But the Dagamach Nefraim says that that's a little bit of a play on the Pasuk but you could be Mepharsh the Pasuk that says, the famous Pasuk, or anybody who's scared of dogs certainly knows this Pasuk, right? When Jews were leaving Mitzrayim, none of the dogs barked. Says the Helig of Dagamach Nefraim, because the Torah scroll, and it's brought down in Paiskim earlier and later, everybody says this, not just the Hasidim, um, um, but the Dagamach Nefraim says because the Torah doesn't have any vowels, doesn't have any nikudas, you're able to take to take a word, and even though it's a, a little bit not the real pronunciation, you could change it in order to be to, 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 to darsh in it. Says the Dagamach Nefraim, you could read the pasuk like this. Ulachal b'nei Yisrael leicharetz kalav l'shoyne is referring to what is referring to the geula from Mitzrayim. What was the galus in Mitzrayim? The galus in Mitzrayim was the separation between heart and mouth. Was galus hadibur. So he says this pasuk could be referring to the yichud between the mouth and the heart because he could read it ulachal b'nei Yisrael leicharetz because kilev l'shona. Kalev Lashonam. At the end of the day, when they got out of Mitzrayim, Kalev Lashonam. Their Lashon was Kalev, was like the heart. Not Kalev, but Kalev. Okay, so you see that there's this very deep connection between speech or lack of speech or 
uh, speech that is blemished, that has to do with, with Mitzrayim. But if we hear the Me'ah Shiloh, goes ahead and he expands this to not only be referring to speech that has to do with the mouth, but to all the various capacities of the mouth. A fascinating thing. Listen to this. <laughs> on the first night of Pesach, and again in Golos, and, and you know, outside of Eretz Yisrael, on the two nights of, of, of Pesach when we have the Seder, the whole thing is that a person is being mevar, as Piv is refining and clarifying the, 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 the powers of the mouth. <laughs> There are three powers of the mouth, and they are achila is eating, ushasiya is drinking, vidibor. This is what the mouth does. This is the function of the mouth, these three things. So we see that all of these three things have corresponding mitzvahs on the night of Pesach. About eating, HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded us to eat matzah. We're drinking the four cups of wine. Right? So we have corresponding to all of these powers of the mouth. We have mitzvahs that are helping refine these powers and capacities. And he says an amazing thing in accordance with the holiness and with the intention and with the strength that a person is going ahead and engaging with the mitzvah of matzah and drinking the four koso. Some people are makbed, they have a couple of more kosos. But upon him, this, that people are, are, are being makbed on, on the four kosos, right? Conscious, with the intention to connect our Kaddish Baruch Hu, in accordance with that, he'll have the ability then the whole entire year to eat and to drink in a way of holiness, which is very important, avoda that is overlooked. Sha'am mitzvah se'elu yiganu ala adam, they will protect the person, I'll call the whole year. Sha'lo yivawa advarim asurim lepiv, that he should never come to eat something us, or drink something us, or eat or drink even motor things in an, you know, in, 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 in an inappropriate way. Ultimately, that's all founded upon and based on and predicated on and dependent on Seder night, because Seder night is the headquarters of the mouth. And ultimately we find that Dibor is something that's very stressed and very focused upon on Seder night. That's all we do. We sit around and we talk and we talk and we talk. Right? Because the whole thing of Pesach is speech. Right? To refine that capacity of the mouth to speak of the story of Mitzrayim, of Uzei Yishakana, Akal Hashanah, again, in accordance with the way in which we're engaged with this mitzvah to refine the mouth with consciousness and holiness and feeling and emes, ultimately, on the night of the Seder, ultimately, that will protect on all of the speech of the whole year. That a person should find it easier to stay away from Dibur Masurim, from Nibble Pet, from Lashon Hara, from inappropriate speech, etc. And so that's why this Pasuk, referring to the Sibri Tiyas Mitzrayim, says, and, and not just Sibri Tiyas Mitzrayim, but rather Matzah and the Dalat Kosos and all of the various mitzvahs of Seder night, what does it say? So that a person's whole mouth, not just his speech, and not just his eating, and not just his drinking, but Pefichah all of the capacities in the mouth should be filled with the Torah of Hashem and that they should be clarified and filled with the words of Torah and that's Seder night L'chaim. Number three, Kedusha Slevi says that Eliyahu Bedich for Shchus here in Aleinu Makol Yisrael. What a Shchus to learn the words of the Tzaddikim together in Yerushalayim. By Yedaber Hashem Moshe in this week's parasha, Kedush Baruch Hu speaks to Moshe Leimer and he says to him, Kadish li Kol Bechar. Right, because in correspondence with the makas bechoros that Hakadosh Baruch Hu smote all the bechor from the Mitzrayim. So too, right? In exchange for that, all of the bechor of Klal Yisrael became holy, became a kudash from birth, right? From 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 the the first moment, without having done anything to earn it, they just had this holy status, and they need we, we do pidin haben ultimately to go ahead and to redeem that from the service of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. But al pidin Torah, really, they're 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 um, there's a word for it. They are sanctified. sanctified um, yeah, there's, there's another word also. Sacred. They are sacred. They are sanctified. They are set aside for, 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 the, for, the, uh, for the for the for the for the avodah of the Beis Hamikdash and for the avodah of Hakadosh Baruch Hu ultimately. So he says again something a little bit more to make it relevant to you and I. Ulevar perish pasuk, and with this mashal that he's going to give, we can also understand the pasuk b'ni b'chayri Yisrael that Hakadosh Baruch Hu praises Klai Yisrael as being his firstborn son, which is a little bit difficult to understand. Like, what's the big praise? You could say that we're all his children. What's the special thing b'ni b'chayri Yisrael? You have other children that were the b'char. What is this nikuda that we are the b'char? So I once heard Stam an amazing thing in the name of the Maral. That's not what the Kedusha Slavi says, but something else that's really beautiful is that the b'char has something over all the children because it's only the firstborn child that turns the parent into a tati or into an abba. All the other children, he was already, there wasn't a status change. But the Bukhar has this special thing that the life is, will never be the same before and after. 
And that's Tali on the Bechar. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu praises us. B'ni Bechari Yisrael, you turned me into Elokai. You turned me into Av. You, you made me a Tati, mm-hmm. says HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's something that's special, special to me. And uh, it's good to keep in mind that Torah all the time, that, that we ultimately make HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, ain't Melech below Am. And so we're very precious to him because we affect, Kaviachal, a status change by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, whatever that means. Al Piyah Mashal. Okay, so here he wants to give another Pshat Al Piyah Mashal. Misha lo made va'osik va'avodas Hashem Yisbarach. A person who davens and a person who learns in his Kaviyah Itim and a person who sets the the, 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 the requisite time to focus on Avodah Hashem, Ba'achar Limud, Osik B'masa Umatan, which can be translated as a person comes and, 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 uh, and, and works at WeWork, right? B'masa Umatan, in this building, in this place, that a person is Osik and making a Parnasa. That's what we're doing here. Yesh possesses Shnei Sugim, says the Kedusha there's two kinds of these people, which is the, the, the masses, right? This is what most people are engaged with. Echad hu be'ein maven. He says one kind of person is not really plugged into bina, is not really plugged into deep understanding. Nirilo ikr. And such a person thinks that the ikr of his life, how do I define myself? By what I do, right? By what my asik of parnasa is. That's who I am. I'm synonymous with it. But the second kind of person, hu be'maven, which is all of us, hopefully, a second type of person, I'm sure. Hu be'maven, she'ish lo lev tahar. A person who has a pure heart, v'yodeh and he knows be'emesh she'ikr tachlis abriya. That the true tachlis and the function of all of creation, we call it is with all the spiritual worlds and the physical world. That's the ikr of life, right? That's the main that's, that's the main importance and the main reason for which HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent me down into the world in the first place. This that I have to go ahead and engage with business for financial security is ultimately so that I should be able to channel that all to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and not to all the time being rodef after extras, extras. If you have enough to live on and you have enough that you should have financial security for yourself and for your children and to live a comfortable lifestyle, of course it has to be comfortable, right? Obviously a person has, particularly in our generation, right? Without that, it's 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 um it's it's a tremendous tremendous obstacle towards serving a Kodesh Baruch when a person has financial woes and struggles and there's and there's on bias problems and there's worry and there's daiga and a person you know is sitting in kol the whole day but if he has that weight on his shoulder so the gemara is not a gemara and the davening is not a davening that takes away more than it adds right that doesn't help so of course a person is trying to live in a way that's comfortable a person is trying to live in a way that makes sense for him to be in this world but al kapanim at the same time he's always remembering for himself what the ikr is never to forget via tafel el ikr yes you need it but it's tafel el ikr it is always secondary to the main thing shuhu Ha tachlis. What's the main thing? Is the tachlis. Is the real purpose for which I was put down to this world? Because eventually it'll come a point in your life where all of that thinking about work, it just it won't it won't make a difference to you anymore. People retire, right? Or uh, people are retiring later and later and later because people have nothing essential in their lives, and so they find that without work, they have no life, right? So you see people retire and then half a year later they're back at, they're back in the office because they found that they, they don't know what to do with themselves anymore, right? Because they because they didn't have this. They didn't have and I'm talking even in a secular world, they don't have hobbies, they don't have things that, that make them like just be right like what what am i if not you know a secretary like that's what i am which is which is a chaval right it's a very shallow way of living that's all they are that's all they do and so here we're talking about a person who realizes that the tachlis and the ikra is always kayam and there will come a time in my life for all of this various thinking you know i always give this muscle um sometimes you see people who are meticulous about filing things now it's all electronic but it used to be in in, in, you know in, in, uh, in 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 previous decades, right, even, you know, 10, 20 years ago, when everything was not really on the, on the computer, so people used to get bank statements in the mail, they still do, but people used to save everything, they used to have filing cabinets, right, in the moment when people had such a thing, yeah, it, it makes people anxious in the first place, but this, that, <laughs> just hearing I, about I, it, I filed for months, just hear, ah, so you know what this looks and, like, and we're cleaning out my grandparents' apartment next week, in a minute, yeah. okay, so, so, so you know, so you know what this Indian is, but, and the muscle will become a little bit more, more, uh, bullet, now that, you, now that you've had that experience, in, in, in the moment when these papers are relevant, they're the most important things in the world. I mean, you can't, you can't lose passports. You can't lose things that are important. Social security numbers, you can't lose. Well, social security is not, is not a good muscle because that's still the end of your life. But you can't lose these things, right? There are things that you'll need. Taxes, right? You need to know. You need to have all the papers from all the charitable organizations that we give to. We need to know. These things are important. Bimabat, from the perspective of like 40 years later, these things don't make a difference. They don't, they don't care. That one time I bought a watch at a... These things, I don't have the watch anymore. I, you know, my, 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 I, I, you know, who cares? Things change, right? These things are not relevant to us anymore. And in the same way, it's good to have this perspective, even on the things that we think really do matter, always to, to remember, you know, things that we get anxious about, things that we get angry about. Sometimes all we need to think is an hour to the future. You know, only in an hour will this really matter as much as it matters to me now, but certainly in a year from now, 10 years from now, 20 years, this is called moichin the godless, where you have an expanded consciousness to think about life, you know, in the grand scheme of things. What's the tachlis? What's what really matters? What really lasts? 
Ultimately, this is the Torah and the Maisim Tevim Kizeh, who Atachus for Ikra Abriya. This is ultimately the Ikra and the main primary uh, factor in creation. Who? B'Shvil Yisrael is for us. I'm Kaddish, like we discussed in the past. The Chala Umaisim Tevilim Ala Ikra. Ultimately, all the nations of the world are also there to ultimately serve this purpose that there should be a world, that there should be societies, that there should be history, that there should be other things going on. Ultimately, Rabbi Nachman says that it's all for the sake of our faith, right? To be a challenge to our faith, that there are millions, if not billions, of Chinese people who will never see an Orthodox Jew. And it should be a challenge to us to think to ourselves, like, how could it be? The whole world was created for us. What are we, a mute of a mute? Orthodox Jews, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction. And really, Bishvilenu, Bishvilenu, Nivra Elam. Yes, they're there for that, for that challenge in faith. The Kodesh needs a world. The Kodesh Baruch needs that, uh, uh, you know, that, that um, framework and that infrastructure. So each of us need to walk with this mashal and this nimshal all the time to always ask ourselves, which of these two Jews are we? How are we living? Am I the first Jew or am I the second Jew? And it makes a difference, not just schar or You know, Hasidim never talked about Olam We don't care about Olam What about this world? It's about living life in this world. What's going to give you the best life? Ultimately, when you retire, do you want to be able to have something that's essential to you? Something that you felt like you look back on life and say, ah, I use my time properly. And that even when I wasn't in the basement, even when I wasn't davening, even when I wasn't consciously engaged with God, but all of that was also holy because that ultimately was a means toward this holy end, toward the tachlis. I lived a life that mattered, that I could take it with me. I gave over Yiddish to my children. I, I had a house that, that a Kaddish Baruch whose name was, was, was spoken about with Baruch Hashem and, and, and Amir Hashem. And this, this was our life, was Avodah Hashem. Or do you want to be a person who is, is, you know, is, is headquartered in, in, the, in the office in something that he ultimately won't be able to take with him. So a person has to walk with this all the time. And such a person will understand and remember all the time that the primary function and purpose of the creation was for Klai Yisrael Am Kadosh. When he remembers that, he'll be able to daven for Jews. Because he'll value what it means to be a Jewish person. He'll understand that the Jews are the center. And every single Jew, no matter how affiliated, no matter how unaffiliated, or a matter how, how, how again, how connected or how uncon- uh, uh, you know, disconnected, it makes no difference, he'll be davening for everybody. That a Kaddish Baruch should go ahead and should bring about Kali Yisrael, Bracha, and Shefa, so that no one should really have to spend so much time in the office. That people should have it a little bit easier, so they should be able to focus their time on what really matters. And that's Pshat in this Pasuk. Kaddish lease as a Kaddish Baruch You want to be holy? You want to live a life of sanctification? You know what you're going to need to do? The premise and the ultimate foundation for living a life of holiness? So you need to remember, Kol Bechar B'Bnei Yisrael. You need to remember that the Bechar, like we talked about before, the most precious thing in the world, the function and the purpose of all of creation is, is B'nai Yisrael. That's the Bechar. The Bechar means the choice, right? The choice. Bikurim is the choice fruits, right? The first fruits. Kol Bechar B'bnei Yisrael. So Kaddish Li, you want to know how to become holy, how to live a life of holiness? Always remember this. Kol Bechar B'bnei Yisrael. I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for a function. I, I'm plugged into the, to the mission for which this nation was chosen and separated from all the other nations. Am bitoch am. And ultimately, I have something, a standard to live up to. Yeda, Shabachor Hu Yisrael, Shinikram, Bini Bachor Yisrael. We should know that a Kaddish Baruch Hu's Bechor, that firstborn, that choice fruit, is the entire nation of Klai who are called a Kaddish Baruch Hu's Bechor. The Heim Hayu Tachlis Habriah, and they are the Tachlis of the Briah of Lezeh, Ye Peterko. And then, ultimately, the Pasuk continues, Peter kol rechem, right? Which Rashi says over there means Peter. And he's going to bring the Pasuk from Mishle. can mean poter, can mean to open. So the opening of all wombs, which means Peter kol rechem, the firstborn, which opens the womb, right? Because the first child that comes out. So ultimately, that should become made holy. But says the Kedusha Slavi, in the way of this Rem, is the first thing is Kaddish Li, if you want to know how to become holy. So then remember, kol bechar b'nei Yisrael. That's the first thing, to remember that Klal Yisrael are the Ikra, and that Abedas Hashem is the Ikra, and everything else is Tafel. That will then cause Peter Kal. What's Peter? It's opening. And Kal means every single person's opening, every single person's mouth will be opened. Al Derech Poter Mayim, like Rashi brings, like the Pasuk from Mishle, Poter Mayim, an opening of a spring of water. Shekol Diburcha, Yerechem Pivnei Yisrael. Peter, Peter Kal, everybody's mouth will be open. For what purpose? 
Rechem b'mnei Yisrael. But Rechem can mean womb, but it could also mean Rachem. Rachem b'mnei Yisrael. Once we understand that b'nei b'charbi, b'nei b'charbi Yisrael, kol b'char b'nei Yisrael, that I understand that Klai Yisrael are so important, that Rabbi Hashem is so essential, so then pet or call, every person's mouth will be open for what purpose? Rechem b'nei Yisrael. Your God, Baruch Hu, please have mercy on Klai Yisrael. So the B'dich reads a Pasuk. Ha'in lo o'er rachamana sa Yisrael, she ha'shpi'a la'em Hashem Yisbarach, shefa bracha, b'ni chayim hazon y'refua. Amen. Okay. With the last couple of minutes, let's try to speed through these pieces from Noam the Melech with the help of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Vayoyim er Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu says to Paro, after Makas Arbe, which by the way you should know, it's a fascinating thing, you can look it up, you can Google it, right now Egypt is having one of the worst locust attacks that they've had in decades. On Parsha's bow, it's an unbelievable thing. What's the, what's the chances of that, right? There are no chances. It's all, it's all HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Ashkacha. So, Moshe Rabbeinu says after Marcus Arba to Paro, he says, Binareinu vizkanenu nelech. Paro says, what do you want from me? And he says, we're going to go out with everyone. We're going to go out to serve a Kaddish Baruch in the, in the desert and we're going to take our men. We're going to take the children. And Paro says, you can go, but leave the children behind. And then he gets hit with Marcus Choshech. Right? And then after Marcus Choshech, he says, okay, you could take the kids, but not. But over here, Binareinu vizkanenu nelech. Moshe says, we're going out with our kids. What does this mean? Nira lefarish yisa bigamara says the Noam and the Melech. We can explain it based on the Gemara. That the Gemara says, B'simchas Beis HaShoeva, at this tremendous, joyous time of Simchas Beis HaShoeva, the way that it's described. Anybody who didn't see the Simchas Beis HaShoeva never saw goodness, never saw joy, never saw... Right? What, what, what that was, that experience of just absolute freedom. Cheres, old men dancing like little children. Everybody would watch. And the, the torches and, and all the different, the, the, you know, the, the, the different expressions of Simcha in that moment. One of the expressions were what the, that the Tzaddikim used to say, Ashrei yaldatenu. Fortunate is our youth. Shalag bisha as the knesena because we are not embarrassed of our youth in our old age. This was part one of the expressions of the joy that they would say. Says the Noam You know what this means? kashura. That these tzaddikim were from a very young age. We're acting properly. And so therefore, when they got older, they didn't look back. Again, this also connects to the way that Kedusha slated. They didn't retire and then look back on life and say, oh, what I spent my whole time with. The whole time was with Kedusha, with, with Kashras, with holiness. She Ugam came to Kedusha, which was all the time with Kedusha. Avol, Misha, Eina Misnai, B'Kedusha, Minurasai. But a person who's not being Misnai with in a, in a way of kedusha in one's youth. So as when a person comes to old age, whom is bayish mi ma'isav akoydim, so then he's embarrassed and he and he sighs over it and he says nebuch that I wasted out the time. Shetzarek laser mi You know, sometimes you meet people and they say I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey. It's okay to journey, but just keep an eye on the clock. You know, it's okay to have a journey. But some people are journeying all the time. You know, Rishlomo used to have a muscle. Uh, you know, one time they had this they had this uh, concert and Rishlomo all the time was a little bit late. You know, he used to walk in and he used to say it's okay. I'm exactly on time because it only starts when I get here. You know, but but he was he, sometimes. He would come hours and hours and hours late. So one time he was very late and he came running in with his guitar and he starts to strum and the guitar was not tuned properly. So someone said, it's Chabal, you're going to stand here playing al Kapanam. You should have a guitar that plays, you know, that's tuned. You know, so he says, no, we got to start, we got to start. So someone says, no, I'm an expert tuner, just give me the guitar. And he sits and sometimes there's a lot of noise in the room. He can't exactly tune it perfectly, you know, and he's, it just wasn't going. So someone says, okay, we, we, we have to, uh, absolutely have to start. Somebody else stood up. He said, no, let me try, let me try. And right, someone looked at him and he said, no. He said, we, we have to start the concert. He says, just let me try. Shlomo looked at me and he says, remember what I'm, what I'm about to tell you. He said, there are some people who spend their whole lives tuning and they never get to play. And then he started the concert. Some people spend their whole lives tuning and they never get to play. So it's okay to journey. It's okay to have that journey. And everyone needs to have that journey. If you're a real person, you have a journey. If not, so your stomach, you know, your, 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 your lave and your heart, or your lave rather, and your pet are completely disconnected. But just keep an eye on the clock. You don't want to get to a certain place in your life where you look back and say, did I really need, you know, to take that, that gap year and that this and that that? Uh, we have to remember, keep an eye on the goal. Keep an eye on the tachlis and on the clock all the time. So, okay, so we don't want right, to come to a situation where a person comes to an old age and, and feels bad. All right? So he's a little embarrassed and he says, like, I, I acted immaturely. Right? And so, um, a per, right? And, and, you know, in, in such a way that a person needed to abandon that way. It's a good thing just to jump into holiness. Like Rabbi Tzaddik says right at the beginning of Tzaddik Tzaddik, that's Bechi Pazon, right? The Torah wants to tell us that you, sometimes you just got to jump into holiness. Sometimes, sometimes you have to go slow, and there are other times when a person's life just just go. Like if you're feeling it and you and you and you tasted it, just just jump in, jump into the mikvah. Sometimes, sometimes, 
Okay, so here he says this is Pshan of the Pasuk Zesha Amar Kasuv. This is Pshan of the Pasuk Chanoch Lenar Apidarko Gamki Yaskin Lo Yasimimena, which literally means educate the child in accordance with his own path, which is a very deep thing to know each child's way and how a person needs to be educated. Not Chas to have this uh, assembly line where everybody comes out looking the same, but every person is an individual and a shaman needs to be dealt with. So Gamki Yaskin, if you'll do such a thing, you'll be Mechanach properly. Even when a person gets old, Lo Yasimimena, he won't. Separate from that path, but here the Noam the says a little bit deeper. Kilomar, you know what it means that when he gets old, he won't separate from it. Kilomar shelo yitzarich lasser midrachav akodem. If a person is educated properly and a person's beginning of the life is going in a proper way, so then gam kiyaskin lo yasim. Not that he won't stray from the good path. He won't. He won't need to. Right? Meaning, what in his old age when he is acting properly, he won't need to look back at his youth and distance himself from it. He'll say it was good the whole time. And his whole life was just you know, from beginning to end was just in this way of holiness. And then it will become far easier to him and his old the age to serve a Kodesh Baruch in the proper way. And it doesn't even say the Pshat on the Pasuk, but it's clear to us. But Yomer Moshe, Moshe says to Pari, you know how we're going to serve Hashem? Binarenu oviskenenu. Both with our youth and our old age, that a person always has to go ahead and to try to think for himself. And, and youth is subjective, right? Every person, uh, you know, Menachem wanted a person every day to wake up and to start fresh. But it shouldn't take a time to get into Avadah Hashem. From the very morning, from the very, you know, minute that a person wakes up, Yizgabar Ka'ari, begin again fresh, that the, that the youth of this day, or the youth of this year, or the youth of this Decade, it should be it should be already going going on a on a good way, right? It happens to be that now we're in the time of Shovavim, right? And the time of Shovavim, without getting to the depth of what that is, also we don't have time now. But it's a special time for Shmir Sabris. It's a special time to ask a Kodesh Baruch for mercy that we should be able to rein in, right? Those desires and those yitzharas and those taivas to be able to go and go in a holy way. But it's also important to recognize that. Anybody who's a parent is not just a, you're not a private person anymore. Yerba Hashem is not just for you, right? If, there, if it's a time of Shovavim, it's a time of a special Siyat Adishma, you got to use that time to pray for your children also. Don't just think about yourself. If they're daven for the kids, right? And, and this is a very good thing to keep in mind. Let our children be pure. Let our children, you know, be innocent. Let that innocence remain with them. Let them go in a healthy way, in a proper way.